just like I was. We're to yeah. take that love, that, that love light of Jesus Christ out to that world. So be reminded this week, no matter what happens, catch yourself. Don't respond when somebody runs you off the road and you want to give them a little, hey, you're number one. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Just go, he's number one. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't have the scriptures uh, in front of me here, but Brother Bill, I need a little help here. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Bill. I can put these away. I can see them. <laughs> okay, we're in Luke today, starting with uh, verse number 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good, thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also have come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Of the book of Revelation. And the beast was taken, and with, with him a false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now you guys Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you so much for your word. And Lord, I pray, Father, that we would open our eyes to your word and that that would be the final authority, Father. All truth is there. And that we would be cautious of the false prophets out there that are misleading your creation, Father. And that the truth would overcome, Father. They would come to the saving knowledge of the one way to you, Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. We thank you so much, Father. I pray you will anoint pastor as he brings a message this morning. And we thank you so much, Father, for the love that you share with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everyone gets to go to heaven. No. But not everybody gets to stay. Mm -hmm. What do you think the great throne room is? Judgment. Where God brings judgment on the lost. That's right. Say, Pastor, why are you preaching about this? Because we need to know where the lost world is going. Amen. There is no thing called purgatory. Right. The Catholic Amen. Church created that to control people and to get money. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why Martin Luther King, Martin Luther left the church. Right. They named somebody Martin Luther King Jr. after him and other stuff. And I just wish he'd preach the same truth. And that's me. You want to talk to me about that? That's not racism. 
That's just a fact. I just deal with what God's Word says when somebody's teaching something else that makes me mad. Yeah. Amen. I do not have a right to change God's Word. Right. And you don't either. Right. Amen. I don't care how big a church is. I don't care how great a man supposedly is. If you're not preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified, Amen. you're wrong. Amen. And you're taking other people to hell with you. And that's what this place is. Not everyone gets to stay. The lid off hell. Take a look inside. Luke 16, 19 through 31. And we're going to look at this. And then we're going to look at the great throne room of God. Look who is there and why. He said, Pastor, why are you teaching this? Because you need to be convinced that hell is real. Amen. If you are convinced it's real, you will quit messing around and you will start sharing Jesus with people. See, there is none righteous, no, not one. Right. Is that true? So those people that you love greatly, they're going to face judgment. And you have the truth. Why won't we tell them? Well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Well, I've got news for you. Listen to what happens here. First verse. Verse 19. Next week we're going to talk about, as believers, why we're not there. Amen to that. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Epicurean. He was the guy that lived this life of let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may what? Yeah, you heard that still there today. It's a way of life. You're seeing it in, in People Magazine, you see it in Us Magazine, you see it in Red Book, you see it in Look, you see it in anything. These people. We have TV shows about the rich and shameless. You know? They're, they're all over the place. This is one of those guys. I don't, I don't watch that one, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you were up to me and all that other stuff. <laughs> 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 Hold it. But here, this is the truth. People are trying to tell you what you need to enjoy life. Well, this guy had it. He had everything. The idea about the purple and linen. Purple was a very costly dye. It was made from, from shellfish. And it cost a lot to do that. And linen was a very cool cloth. Now imagine the poor people having to use wool and everything was spun out of homespun stuff, and that's what they wore all year long. Imagine the beggars and stuff. Now, folks, this sounds gross, but you get fleas, you get other stuff, you get bugs and stuff in that kind of clothing, and there were no Maytags. So you didn't go down to the local laundromat and drop this in, oh, man, this bed bug express and get rid of it. It didn't work that way. But the linen, it kept all that out, and it was cool. He had everything. He was styling. He thought he had it all. In verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. See, this guy went into eternity without even a name. Just a rich man. A faceless individual for all eternity. But the beggar had a name. And God knows our name, doesn't he? Amen. He knows his sheep. And his sheep know his voice. Right, amen. This is where God's trying to get our attention, church. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus who was laid his gate full of sores. Look, he was starving to death. He had disease. He was just full of ugly. That was it. You think your life is bad? You think you've got problems? Nothing compared to what he had. But you know what he had? He had his faith in the Lord God. That's what he had. He knew there was a God. It never passed. It, he never questioned that. Now see, both of these guys were Jews. How do I know that? Because the people that Christ was talking to would not be interested in a Gentile. It would have no meaning to them. A non-Jew. But, 
I think they knew these guys. That's just my opinion. You know, my opinion and, and five bucks will get me a Starbucks and that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> but you know, God's telling them this for a reason. And who is he talking to? He was talking to the Jews. Those that supposedly knew the truth. That studied the word. That had the Old Testament. That had the prophets. They thought they were the elite. And he's talking to them. And he said there was a certain beggar. There was this guy named Lazarus. Who was laid at his gate. The rich man's gate full of swords. Verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Couldn't even move. He was miserable. But see, the Jewish law said he could beg outside the gate. And that the rich man, to meet his... This is so infuriating. To meet his religious requirements, he could give him just crumbs. And that would be enough. Church, we can't give crumbs to the world. They have to have the full meal, don't they? Just, well, praise the Lord here, or amen here, or a little something. No, they don't. That's not going to do it. They need to know who Jesus Christ is. Amen. They need to know what's happened to us. Mm -hmm. Say, but pastor, I don't know a lot of scripture. Do you know what happened to you? How many of you know what happened to you Man. the day you gave your life to Christ? Man. You can tell them that. That's right. When a brother or sister in Christ is struggling, <coughs> they say, well, I don't. Say, Look, the God that saved you hears everything you go through. He sees it all. And he loves you for who you are. He does not expect you to be like the pastor. He does not expect you to be like the deacon. He does not expect you to be like the Sunday school teacher. He doesn't expect you to be like the trustee. He doesn't expect you to be like the song director. Praise the Lord. He expects you. He expects you to be like to focus on Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because that's what the song director's doing. Amen. Focusing on who Jesus is. The world needs to hear from us what's happened to us. Amen. Say, man, I remember the guy that was blind. He says, man, I don't know, but all I know is I was blind, but now I see. Mm -hmm. That's right. When people say, well, you really believe that? Yeah. Why do you believe that? Because I'm different. I don't carry around that guilt anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I don't carry around that fear anymore. Amen. I'm different. So, man, what's happened to you? I don't know. But all I know is I read God's word and I believe what he said and inside I'm different. See, that's not the crumbs. That's the full meal. That's what they need. And here's this guy who lays outside and the dogs come up and lick his sores. He is suffering. But the guy inside didn't care. So he could have picked him up. He could have gone out there and said, look, servants, get him, take him over to the doctor's office and tell him to take care of him and I'll take care of him, whatever it takes. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He could have done that, but he just walked around him. He said, oh yeah, shake the tablecloth out there for him. Verse 22, and that comes into play later. It came to pass that the beggar died. One of my friends one time says, I believe the old boy up and starved to death. But he died. It's a point that a man wants to die after this is judgment. How many you know that? I don't care how long you live or you don't live, there's a destiny of God. And I'm so thankful that children, that children, when they stand before the Lord, God has made provision for their innocence. Aren't you glad of that? Yes. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Because it's God's love and God's mercy. And God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. There are times God's extended his mercy to you. 
right. and to me. Right. I can tell you the first place is when somebody told me that God loved me. That was the greatest step for me mercy. Because God could have just passed right on by me. But he took care of me. And God can use you to let somebody else know that he loves them. Said it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. That's the abiding place. That was the Old Testament. Before Christ rose again, it's where the saints went. Paradise, it's been called. How many of you know what county jail is and what Folsom Prison is? Okay, you know what they are? Okay, there, you know, it's the Great Bar Motel, okay? <laughs> And but you go to one and it's like you're there for a while and the other one you're there. You are there. Uh, one one time a friend of mine that had been a member of the church that I pastored, um, he had moved to Alaska. Somehow he got to be pen pals with a guy in the pen at Folsom. And he came down from Alaska to visit his family and asked me if I would go to see him. I said, sure. I went in there and I had on a blue suit and we walked through and the guards had guns. I mean, they had guns. Walked through and the guard with a gun looked at me and said, don't be wearing a blue suit in here again. I said, okay. And he was not very happy about that at all. He was just being what he was. A guy that had just about had enough of working in the prison. And uh, really sad deal. But I'll tell you what, when you went in through those gates, and those gates closed behind, and there's the stone walls, you're inside, man, you know you're in prison. And there's nobody smiling at you. We walked a little bit further through some other guards, went into a place and sat down and we talked with this guy. He kidnapped some kids, told them from ransom up in San Francisco. It was a big deal. I remember about it, reading in the paper. I was sitting there looking face to face at a guy that was going to do 20 years hard time in Tulsa. Now, I have been to a county jail and gone inside and talked behind somebody sitting behind the glass. It was a totally different thing. We're both jails. But I'll tell you what, when you're in Folsom, you know you're in jail. You know you're in prison. That's the difference between hell and the lake of fire. We'll get to that in just a minute. See, this poor guy didn't even have a funeral. He was so poor, they took him to the potter's field, and there he was. There was a marker to say Lazarus was here. There was no procession that said, this man walked this earth, nobody cared. The rich man also died and was buried. He had everything. He had the procession. He had the guys that they would pay professional mourners to follow behind them and cry. Ooh, you know, The more mourners they had, the more people wailing. They said, man, this guy was rich. Because that was the custom. Lazarus didn't have anybody. Just gone. And he was buried. Does that sound final to you? The rich man? That sounds pretty final, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. See, Lazarus carried to this place. Now let's look and see what happens. Verse 23. Now the guy was buried, says, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. There's two places. And look at this. The misery was he could see what he missed. He could see the guy. When people ask me, what's hell like? You will have feelings. You will have intelligence. You will have sight. And you will have hopelessness. And lots of that. 
This is the lid off of hell. Verse 24. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. The new word gets added to his vocabulary. Something he never had for Lazarus. See, we cannot do anything after it's over. You can't say, boy, I wish I had gone to Uncle Herkimer before he kicked. It's too late. It's now. It's today. It's now. Now is when we can do something. He said, have mercy on him and send Lazarus. They may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. What does that mean? Why is he talking about that? He wants a crumb of water. All he can ask for is what he showed on that earth. The crumbs from the table, just a little bit of water. Talked about this in the Bible college, and I really got irritated with people. I just believe this is exactly what happened. I don't think this is a made up something or other to get us to start thinking. I think this is the place. And these are the guys. You can think what you want. But I can live very well and sleep very well with what I think. I'm not trying to find a way around. I want people to know exactly what it is. Because, child of God, if we understand what hell is like, it's going to change the way we live. Yeah. It's going to change the way we think. Yeah. It's going to change the way we pray. You think that's true? Mm -hmm. It's going to change the way we praise our God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm not going there. I got my ticket. Now, if one was sitting there, she'd be sick. Any ticket, I got it. It's true. I got my eternal ticket. Christ paid for it. He gave it to me. I was smart enough to receive it. That's all it is. There was nothing good about me. God offered it, and I took it. Because somebody explained to me what it was. Why did he want? For I am tormented, what? In this flame. It's not what I'm saying. Now, Reverend, you can interpret the Word of God many ways. Okay, somebody tell me what this is saying. You interpret it. Does he want to be there? Is it miserable? Yes. How many of you ever been burned? Come oh, on, put your hand up. How many here have ever been burned? Oh, that was fun. I'll do it again. <laughs> no. How many of you ever had a severe sunburn where you couldn't move? I almost died from it. Okay. Now you're beginning to understand why you want to pay attention. Because when you burned like that, you couldn't lay down. I remember that. Tried to put on clothes, it hurt. When you moved, it hurt. Have you ever had anybody come up and didn't know you had a sunburn and slap you on the back? Yeah. Yeah. Just turn around and say, oh, bless you. Yeah. Yes. I, I think not. But see, why are we laughing? It's not funny. But you know what this is? Because you get a glimpse of just the beginning of what he is still experiencing. <coughs> See, there's no end to that. Still experiencing it. For I am what? Tormented in this flame. Tormented. You understand what that word means? <clears throat> Never ending and you can't do anything about it. Verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. <coughs> so let's go back. You remember how you had everything. But he did have everything. And one of the things he had was the knowledge that God was real. 
as a Jewish child, he was taught what God's Word said. Every child, every family taught the Messiah would come. Everyone was taught that there was a God. Everyone was taught they could offer up sacrifice. There was no excuse for them not knowing who God was. None. If you came here this morning and you didn't know about it, guess what? You messed up because now you know. Not because what I said, but because what he said. You don't have to believe me. Believe him. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. See, he doesn't say they're bad. They're evil. You know, sometimes Satan just messes with us. How many of you as Christians know Satan's messed with you? Yeah. How, many know, how many of you just felt just at some point in your life just like this evil presence somewhere? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Satan does that. He says, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. The tables are turned. See, there wasn't any sin in the man being rich. And there wasn't any honor in the other man being poor. It's what they did with their life in those circumstances. That's right. yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God doesn't love people more than others and say, you know what, Randy, I love you so much. I'm going to make sure you have all the money and everything that you need. Big Herc? Not so much. I still remember that Roman soldier walking around with that spear. Yeah, you're part day, no, not so much. God doesn't do that. You can read and you can listen to some guys on TV and it's like, you know, the greater faith you have, pile up the money. It's not true. Boxes have holes. Birds have nests. Right. Son of man has no place to lay his head. Right. Need to understand that. Right. They're just circumstances. I'll tell you what. It really bothers me when I hear about this. Get rich in Jesus' name. Because mm -hmm. you know what it does? It destroys people it destroys people that get caught up in all of that. It really does. You know what it does to people that have, maybe they were raised in a place where there weren't those opportunities. So they're saying, you know what, God doesn't love me as much as he loves those others. That's not true. Not at all. Verse 26. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great bill fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. We couldn't come and help you, no matter what. Because God has this chasm fixed, and we can't cross that, and you can't cross it. So what does that do about the Catholic Church when they say, you can pray somebody out of purgatory? You can pay money to have somebody prayed out. It's a lie, right? Mm -hmm. It is a lie. It is a lie hatched where this guy is. Because what does Abraham say? We can't. Yeah. And you can't come out of there. There's no do-overs. It's not a playground. This is serious eternity. Right. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that. When somebody talks to you about that, you need to tell them that's not true. Know where this verse is. Luke 16, 26. You need to know where it is. Because when they try and tell you that, say, no, you need to read this. God says that doesn't exist. Right. That's right. Put it in the computer banks. Purgatory is a lie. Right. Say it with me. Purgatory, Purgatory is, is a lie. lie. People need to know that. You can't pray out somebody's relative. Right. You can't buy them out. You can't buy them out. You can't. It's what we do before. 
Say, Pastor, you're getting hard. No, I'm getting true. Yeah, that's right. That's what you need. That's right. Because we're dealing with a lost world. Amen. You know what? And they depend on us to give them whatever truth they're ever going to get. Because right. right. other folks aren't. Mm -hmm. We have some great people. We have some great churches in this town. How do you know that? We have some great churches in this town. And their preachers are preaching like I'm preaching. Telling their people the truth. But we have others that are lying. When you come across folks and they give you something that's off the wall, just tell them what God's Word says. Yeah. They're not interested in your opinion. Here's what God's Word says. Well... Anybody can interpret the Bible a hundred different ways. Say, read it for yourself and see what you come up with. Because nine times out of ten, they haven't read it. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, thou would send him to my father's house. Now he becomes a missionary. The time is now, not then. Because what's done is done. Today is the day that we can share Christ with folks. Verse 28. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them unless they also come to this place of torment. <laughs> See? Some more things that we can know about it. He doesn't want anybody to go there. Right? right? That's right. These are the brothers he fought with. These are the brothers yeah. that he tried to take money from. Because mm -hmm. that was how they did things in those days. That's yeah. how they rolled. Yeah. All right? Yep. Yeah. But now he doesn't want one of them to come there. Mm -hmm. Now the compassion comes out. Yes. <laughs> now it comes out. But it's too late. Verse 29. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. They have what everybody else had. Mm -hmm. right. That's how I know that he's a Jew. You guys look who he's talking about. Right now. Moses and the prophets. They have all the word. Let them hear that. Yep. Because it's the word that delivers. It's the word that seals faith. Because it's truth. Verse 30. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, no. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said, no. Why? Because he didn't believe. And he had Moses and the prophets. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know. There are people today, many of them have more than one Bible in their home, and there are many that have no Bibles. But there are many that have Bibles in their home, and they're still going to die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. They have the truth. They don't bother to open it and look at it. But there's the truth. Verse 31. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded that one rose from the dead. And who was the one that rose from the dead? Jesus. And people still don't believe. There are people who go to church regularly and don't believe that. They think things are just going to get better. How's that working for us? Have things been getting better? But what gets better for us is every day with Jesus Christ. Because we understand no matter how much this world is going the way it's going, God still loves us. You baby Christians, those that have been saved just a little while, I want you to know God loves you. And the reason we're talking about this this morning is this is what you almost got. Yeah. That's right. That's right. This is what we almost got. How many here have they ever had anybody shoot at you? Yeah. Man, I've had, yeah. I've had people. I've had from a lawnmower hit me. <laughs> I was sitting, I was fishing once when I was a kid, sitting on this rock, and there were some guys over on this, this horseshoe cove. And they were over on a bluff on the other side, and they decided they wanted to shoot me off the rock. Huh. I'm sitting there, and I felt the bullet fly by my head. I heard the air. Not once, but three times I felt that. 
one time as a kid walking up on a hill. I could quit going fishing, man. It's dangerous. <laughs> Went on a hill, and a guy was shooting at pheasants, and he was shooting towards the road. And I walked up off the river, up the road. I was probably about 10 years old, and felt a whole load of buckshot go by my side of the head. So, I'm telling you, just everyday life is not fun. It's not. There are times I could have been killed. <coughs> The bullet came close enough. Now, I don't know about you, but I understand when you can hear a bullet and feel the wind, that be close. Why didn't God let me just get blown off the hill either time? Because God's mercy. Period. God's mercy. Life is fragile, folks. It's short. We can have stuff happen. Just living everyday life. That's not counting the diseases and everything else that, that hit us. But God has given all of us a second opportunity. How many here have ever gave, given your life to Christ as a child and then went back into the world? Huh? Who did that? Who did that? And came back to Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know how... Do you know how fortunate you are and how merciful God was to do that. How close did you come to just walking away the last time and it would have been the last time? Our God is merciful, is He not? Amen. Let's look at Revelation here. Revelation 19.20. We read the end of the book. And the reason I'm doing this is because you need to see what's in the end of the book. Mm -hmm. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet. This has not happened yet, but it's coming. And I've told you that I believe in the, in the rapture of the church. I've told you that I believe God's not done with Israel. I've told you that I believe there will be a thousand year reign. I've told you all of that stuff. Here. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet. Now, it was a Bible college. They told me that that was the Roman army and all of that stuff going in and cross-plowing the temple grounds and all that. These are individuals because they're in hell. They're going to be. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, the Antichrist. And them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. This is false imprisonment, folks. The first place is waiting for the judgment. Scripture says hell hath enlarged itself. This is the real deal. The guy, the guy that's going to bring such havoc on this earth. Satan. Incarnate. This guy. This is where he's going to be. Let's see the next one. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet, what? Are and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Satan loses. Amen? Amen. 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 This is the end of the book. That's right. Amen. That's right. Now I can't get him there, but God will. Every knee shall bow. Right. But this is who will be in hell. <coughs> Let's look at the next verse. And shall go out to see the nations which are in the four quarters of that. I don't know how I got there, but keep going. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. This is God's house. Remember when I said. Everybody goes to heaven, but not everybody stays. I heard John Hagee say that. Pastor Hagee. I like that. Yeah. Because when I was in Bible college, we never talked about that stuff much. Yeah. But here was this, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on whose from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there's found no place for them. Keep going. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The dead are the lost. Child of God, you're not going to be here. Amen. How do you know that? Because remember what Brother Tip was, God said, all your sins cast away, I'll remember them no more. 
How can you be held in judgment if there is no sin laid at your feet? Amen. Say, but you don't know how long I lived in sin. God does, and it's gone. Remember, why do you think He calls us babes in Christ? Pure. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in, in, in books according to their what? Works. Because that's all they can stand on. They do not have the blood applied. All they've got is their works. And our works will not cut it. Right. I don't care how many hospitals you build for children. I don't care how many places you build to house old folks. It's not going to make any difference. Because it's all about Jesus and what He did. One more. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and hell delivered up the dead. That's where that guy was. Which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. We got one more. Is that it? And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. This guy, he thinks it's torment now. But the lake of fire, if anything can be worse than hell, the lake of fire is. Because it talks about the pit. It talks about the darkness. It talks about this screaming and hearing but not seeing anybody. You're totally alone and separated in just in this torment. Child of God, it's where you're not going. Amen? Amen. You're not going there. Why? It's not because of me. It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Is that great? Amen. Now, we're free. Amen? I'm challenging you this year. Live for Christ. Babes in Christ. Put Him first. Because this time next year, you will be winning other people to Christ. We'll be standing here if God hasn't returned. And you will have people that you have led to Christ. You believe that? You can do that. You can. Now that you know about this place, now that you know all about this, you know why we need to be about the Master's business. Would you stand? Brandon, would you come down? This is what's important, amen? Right, this is God's love poured out to us. This is why I preached on there. Not one time did you hear me say, be careful, God will get you. You're not going to hear me say that. God has prepared a place. Amen. What God wants from us is our dedication to Him. That's what He wants. Our love. That's what He gave to us. For that. That's what He wants. With your heads back. Remember that song that we sang? Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Now you know what He's saying. Randy's got a song. He's going to be singing. If anyone wants to come and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, use me. Feel free. Feel free. You can come. That's why these offers are here. We tend to think that they're for backslidden. We think that they're the lost. They're for God's people. If anyone wants to come and say, Lord, help me. To live for you like I've never lived for you before. Father, help me to trust you like I've never trusted you before. You can do that. That's what it says. Father, we thank
you as God's child. We have this time together. something else. We're going to pray for something else right after that. But this, I promise you folks, we will do that this morning. Okay? So we're going to do that. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Father, we pray. Lord, your children will come forward saying they need work. They need a better job. They need work. And Father, I pray you would bless. Lord, we're hearing about things turning around and our society. But Lord, we're asking as a church that you would watch over our folks. Lord, you would supply needs that are there. Lord, we pray that you would lift them up. 
Lord, we thank you that we have this privilege to come to you. You said we can come boldly to throne of grace to find help in time of need. Father, this is a need. And I pray, Lord, that you would honor that. Honor their faith in them coming to you. And Father, I pray, help us in if we hear of anything to let them know. Father, you may use some of us to find places for them. And Lord, I pray that your will be done. In Christ's name we thank you. Amen. 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 Now, we also have a request for a family. The Baxter family. The lady has just passed away this week. And for the rest of the family, what is happening with them? Okay. Any mercy? Yes. Yeah, my neighbor asked last night to pray for her. Her and her husband are both out on holiday. They have some And they're both dying of physical ailments from the alcohol. But they don't do anything. But she's asking for advice. Okay. When lost people ask for prayer. I lost one of my best friends on Friday night. He's got a 20 year old son and his wife. I know. I gave him prayer. Are there any others? We're going to take people to prayer because there's nothing more important than that. Yes. They get a new friend for their cell phone, including the wife. Amen. Folks need help. We got stuff. Okay? Your brother. Amen. Okay. Amen. Huh? Okay. There are people right now, look folks, there are people right now asking for prayer for other people. Amen. For folks. Okay. Okay. We're just praying for each other. We're praying for people right now. Church. The most important thing this church can do is go to the Lord God with us. If there's anything the church is not doing enough of, it's praying. We do a lot of singing. We do a lot of other things. But we need this. Okay. Yes? Pray for Sister Jenny to continue to get better. Okay, let's go to the Lord pray. Sister Sheila, would you lead us as we pray? Would you please? Father God, we just come to you today, Lord. We just lifted up all of these uh, prayer requests, Father, yes, Father needs, Lord. We just God. ask that you just touch in a special way. The families, Father, that are hurting, lost ones, and the physical needs, the sick. Father, we just ask that you just uh, intervene in a special way. Let them feel your peace. Let them feel your love. Just start, wrap your arms around them, Father God. We just thank you and praise you. Yes, dear Father, just thank you for each and every one that came today. And yes, you know. Ask for all these prayers that we lifted up yes. to you, Lord. We're just going to thank you and praise you throughout the day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God's people said, Amen. 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 Yeah. Okay, now Monday night, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they're having revival at the Hanford Church. Tuesday night, we'll be having Bible study here, but I should be over there Monday and Wednesday. And Tuesday over here. Yeah. So, may the Lord bless you real good. You want to go?